right of you, this is the, uh, the best for the vertical engineering. Also, uh, please uh, put your email address at the uh, first column with the character. All right, please. So I'm now 45. Uh, I think I'm, I'm not that old. The problem is my eye has the problem. I cannot see that well. So please make it clear. All right? Yeah. And please check uh, your uh, friends. Okay, I would like to continue uh, what I have talked about some tool skills. Uh, actually, uh, that is not uh, that big an though, but uh, here, uh, as you guys know, uh, the idle gets low. I think um, uh, you already well know uh, about the, uh, the previous material. So. I just want to skip uh, that part today, all right? Um, well, as I went off, uh, this very, uh, very weak uh, looked old man, he just looked like around my age, maybe 45. <laughs> uh, uh, Amadio uh, Avogadro, uh, he is Italian, Italian uh, physical chemist. Uh, he actually, I love it. Uh, he just, uh, you know, uh, provide very information and uh, uh, knowledge, informative knowledge. Uh, you may know the number of the uh, molecules uh, uh, involved. So he is pressure uh, in. You really need to uh, pron pronounce it very carefully. Uh, pressure. This is a pressure. So sometimes. Uh, the pressure is very big. So, are you in, uh, you know, your happiness is in what we can? That is totally, you know, we should be very careful about this. So, pressure uh, it, in atmospheres, uh, in the unit of ATM and or TOR, uh, so 760 TOR equals 1 ATM. And volume? It could be cubic meters, and it could, it could be liters. And uh, uh, as I already talked, uh, the number of Avogadro is 6.023 times 10 to 23. Well, this is very, very important. I think um, when I was a uh, middle school boy, days, um, the Milton is it just like this. What is the number of Avogadro's? So uh, just put the six point something uh, ten, uh, times uh, ten to twenty-three. So well, anyway, uh, interesting, important. And R is gas constant. Uh, this is point zero eight two liter eight ten degree uh, more this works. Well, uh, this could be a uh, change. You can change uh, ATM to tall, and theory can be changed, and also molecule can be changed. Uh, so you can calculate it. Uh, well, I will give you a uh, small homework uh, to convert the, this R value. Temperature, uh, we easily uh, use uh, Celsius, right? And in the United States, and uh, English usually, use uh, Fahrenheit, right? but uh, in science uh, society, uh, we are using Kelvin, uh, which is uh, Celsius plus uh, 273. Well, 0.15, uh, you don't have to you know, that. Is. of uh, Earth's atmosphere. By the way, um, what is the most you know, significant and the serious uh, environmental problem uh, in your mind? Okay. 
uh, I mean, um, what what kind of question? What kind of uh, environmental problem can significantly uh, influence? I can say threaten the humankind. What could it be? Our our energy system based energy on system. fossil fuels. So fossil fuel shortage? No, like uh, fossil fuel based pollution. Okay, so uh, burning the fossil fuel, so uh, air pollutant actually do something to harm to humankind, right? And <coughs> <laughs> I think the unbalance of ecosystem is the one of the biggest environmental problems. Mm -hmm. Any others? Well, you know, uh, when we think about the uh, the problem, we can categorize the uh, the problem. Uh, you know, media. For example, the pollution in air. We call it air pollution, right? Uh, the pollution in water, water contamination, and the pollution in soil and groundwater. Soil and groundwater are always, you know, uh, working together. So uh, we can categorize three main uh, environmental uh, problems. Uh, because you are... I have a question. How do you distinguish between just water and groundwater? Uh, when we talk about water, we uh, usually consider it as surface water. So uh, the surface water uh, includes, uh, you know, uh, river water, pond water, sea water. You can say it, but groundwater you cannot say it actually. So uh, different. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, most of the people here. Uh, are uh, will do and are doing engineering, right? So, for you guys, uh, water and wastewater uh, problem uh, are the uh, main, you know, topic. Uh, for the uh, science major, I think um, uh, atmospheric contamination is much more, you know, uh, can attract the uh, attention actually. But if you think about the global global uh, environmental problem with a better focus on the uh, air pollution. Well, air environmental <coughs> problem, that is not necessarily a focus on the problem. Things, you know. Can you say global warming is contamination problem? Do you think so? Contamination? Well, as I want to what about the carbon dioxide? Is it pollutants? Is it one of proteins? If you just remove carbon dioxide from the ecosystem, well, human being actually never survive because plants cannot, you know, make their nutrients. So, uh, as I already told, uh, that is not the contaminants because the amount, you know, increase then make our life very you know, disturbing, right? Well, in the uh, winter, we can we cannot have good, you know, uh, uh, cool, you know. Well, nowadays it is a little bit So a global warming problem uh, that is not the uh, you know, from the uh, contamination that is you know, the concentration problem actually, right? So, environmental science part, uh, we we are not gonna you know, put much attention or focus on water and wastewater contamination. Uh, we much more uh, focus on environmental problem, a global environmental problem, which could be you know uh, mostly the most regulated uh, environmental problems. So. We need to know uh, the com uh, composition of Earth's atmosphere. Nitrogen, 78%. The molecular weight is 28. And oxygen, 21%. Uh, 32. And argon, 
uh, 1%. Add that. But look at this. If you just uh, uh, add all three chemical compounds, what happened? If it's just 100%, wow. You are, uh, uh, you know, uh, environmental science and engineering professor. So how can we understand this? That, that maybe, uh, maybe this is one point something, you know, one point zero, uh, or this could be 20 points something. You know. uh, but as you can see, uh, these are all small uh, portion. So uh, although, uh, well, I can say this is just like the yeah, 99.8 uh, or 9, 99, something like that. Person is PPH, parts per hundred. And here PPM, parts per billion, right? So 10,000 times difference. And the next one is carbon dioxide, uh, 360 <laughs> PPM. And then NIA, 18 PPM. Helium, uh, 5.2. And methane, 1.5 PPM. <coughs> what is the main source of methane? Hmm? From the cow. Yeah, he is well uh, prepared for his exam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, cow actually farting and cow you know, breathing and actually cow actually you know, emits the uh, nothing actually. Well, you guys do the same thing. And the uh, Lipton, 0.5 ppm, uh, which is 500 uh, ppb, this is billion parts per billion, so, you know, uh, 10 to 3 times difference. All right. Uh, as we already have talked, uh, percent of ppm, ppb in the air is just like the volume per volume base. Uh, this is not the uh, mass per volume or mass per mass uh, base. Uh, so uh, nitrogen, 78% uh, means uh, 78 liter of nitrogen per 100 liter of air. Uh, this could be whenever, but if you just uh, check the uh, uh, 78 uh, you know, ppm in groundwater, well, uh, nowadays, um, you know, we, last year and two years ago, we actually buried uh, live, you know, pigs and you know, chicken and you know, cows. Actually, uh, this actually uh, make very serious problem. It contaminates. I don't know. You just uh, watch the uh, CNN or uh, B, you know, BBS news uh, every day. At that time, it was very very serious problem. It is just like the all the uh, you know, uh, people in the world, except Korean, watch it that you know, a bit of way. So uh, the anchor outside say they are crucially buried, uh, you know, live animals and you know, chickens. You know. Well, I just ask them: Is there any you know alternatives? Except that. Do we need to uh, put all of the uh, living animals into the incinerator and then burn it? Burn that? Is it better? <coughs> well, uh, for the environmental problem, you know, say, I think um, uh, that's why. <coughs> what happens if you bury life or dead body uh, on the ground, in, uh, under the ground? What happens? In the moment, you can like you from the side. Yeah, you, uh, you, your body can be a you know, very good source of petroleum <laughs> and also coal. And you know, well, as Buddha said, you know, we can be very good in you know, the material, uh, all, all you know. but uh, just a, just don't think you know one billion zillion years later, just focus on one hundred or fifty or you know, 10 or 20 years. When you just bury it into the uh, ground, 
what happened is the microorganisms actually you know, decompose you, right? So your body actually made of uh, very you know high molecular uh, chemical compounds can be degraded to elementar chemicals. So phosphates, nitrogen, and carbon oxygen. What's supposed to be the problem? What's supposed to be the very, you know, un, you know, happy and un, you know, and disturbing uh, chemical contaminants when your body actually decomposes? You can smell something. <coughs> well, I know that the U.S. really enjoy the uh, American uh, TV drama. Mm -hmm. Well, Dexter, you guys know that. The city of killer, yeah, and uh, maybe uh, season six and, and in the middle of the episode, you can, uh, you know, the city of killer actually kill us. That the uh, the old man, you know, couple, uh, and they actually uh, smell, you know, it seems like the city city of killer enjoyed the smell of surfer, you know, rotten you know, body actually. So surfer could be the problem, right? And what about the phosphate? The could be. Well, uh, well, I actually my uh, father or my grandfather's, you know, uh, days uh, maybe uh, six or seven years ago, uh, the very small kids in Korea they uh, don't have a playground and they actually uh, you know, play some games uh, at the. Uh, you know, graveyard. So uh, they can see uh, some kind of you know lights uh, uh, when it rains, actually. So the phosphate, phosphorus, chemical compounds react with water, and it actually you know give lights. Well, anyway, phosphate uh, can cause uh, nutrition problem to the uh, to the uh, plants. Right? So uh, the groundwater. It contains nitrogen uh, species, nitrate, and a three minus. It can cause blue baby syndrome. If you drink it uh, much nitrogen, uh, included water, your pace turns to blue. I really don't know if uh, cause you know you to test, but uh, you if you are father and mother of that baby. You don't want to your kids with blue, you know. so blue baby syndrome. Sometimes uh, ammonia and uh, such kind of chemical compounds. You know, if you're just uh, walking uh, through the uh, background uh, under which uh, all the living animals are buried, you can smell something, right? And the in groundwater, you can see a bloody, you know, a groundwater still, and um, so uh, the Korean uh, government actually decided to remediate uh, such contaminated area. The problem is we don't know how to treat that. We don't know how to treat that. Yeah. And one more thing. When we deal with uh, groundwater and soil uh, contamination, well, if you treat with the wastewater and the waste gas, at least you can say, right? If the river is contaminated by some chemicals, you can see the black and blue <coughs> color of contaminated water. But the problem is, if the soil is contaminated, if the groundwater is contaminated, can you see that? Are you Superman? If you are, you can see it. But uh, if not, you really don't know how the contaminants move. This is very, very important. If you know the movement of contaminants, you can actually prevent uh, the contamination. But soil, groundwater, it flows, but you cannot actually see it. If so, how do you engineer it? 
yeah, you can say uh, higher Superman. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. well, in groundwater, uh, you can see uh, the contamination, contaminant concentration, which is ground per river, so mass per body. In the groundwater, well, you can see the uh, mass per body base, but in atmosphere, uh, all of the concentration units are in body per body. Okay. Uh, Some useful question. Um, well, I think that this is just like the uh, uh, middle school uh, chemistry or middle school physics. Uh, but uh, you can see all of these uh, questions in your Milton exam, actually. Uh, well, as I went off, the problem itself is very easy. But, uh, that is totally related to every day in your life. And what you should do is you need to solve this by giving many assumptions. Assumption is very, very important. If you can give right assumption, you can solve the problem very easily. If not, you cannot get it, actually. Right? OK, let's start with some questions. Uh, the first one. What is the molecular weight of dry air? Well, as you guys already have seen, have seen the, uh, the components here, uh, well, most of the uh, atmosphere uh, uh, are uh, composed of nitrogen, oxygen, and argon, right? So we just want to use uh, these chemical components. So 28 is nitrogen and 78% plus oxygen 32, percent <coughs> and then, and then what? What was that? 40? By the way, you guys understand what I'm talking? Really? What did... Hmm? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you can. Well, well, this is very, very important. Uh, enjoying the show. Well, I, actually, I am you know, giving you the show. This is the wonderful show. I am giving very interesting show to you. Please enjoy this. Just don't yell uh, in front of me, please. Um, well, but the important thing is this is also press. You will be evaluated. If you just uh, uh, enjoy my laughing part, and then if you just uh, don't focus on my scientific information, you cannot get the, the trade. This is important. So if you cannot understand, you can raise your hand and ask them. Or even you really want to ask. But my English is too you know, short. Please ask me in Korean. That's OK. All right. So my question was, what is the third? Marty is molecular mass of carbon in the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I want from you guys. Please participate. Right? So uh, 1%. And uh, uh, we just have to add all of this. This is 29 grams or more uh, in uh, dry air. All right. What is the volume of one more uh, gas at 118 and 0 Celsius degree? Wow, this is very simple, right? We just have, uh, uh, you know, apply the, uh, the ideal gas law equation. So uh, volume per uh, number of uh, mole gives, you know, actually here the volume. Because R is a point O A2 and we are we want to uh, here we want to uh, calculate at one ATM and zero Celsius it is two hundred and seventy three Kelvin. If you multiply all of this you can have twenty two point four liter of mole. Well you can uh, check it uh, 
the, this kind of indication in maybe middle school uh, chemistry or in pitch section. 25 Celsius, 24.4 liter per mole. This is very interesting, right? Uh, two liter difference. By the way, is temperature a significant factor for the environmental reaction? How do this, does this uh, factor affect? Higher temperature increases chemical reaction speed. Speed. That means kinetic, right? Is it clear? Is that uh, fully uh, applicable to all chemical reaction? Well, uh, maybe your answer is uh, with the assumption that the reaction is kind of exothermal reaction. What about endothermal? And the genius. Well, actually, it can go differently. For example, if you want to degrade uh, PAHs, is there anybody who smoke here? Smoke. Well, uh, I think that is very, very not good, you know, habit. Uh, so you guys want to, you know, actually quit the smoke. Uh, what is the main toxic uh, chemicals uh, when you smoke and uh, causing you know, lung cancer? Or, no. Nicotine and tar actually cannot kill you with such a amount. Have you heard about benzo-e-pyrene? Yeah, benzoyepyrene, which include five, six millions of benzene, uh, liquid PAH. So, well, uh, you also can expect uh, benzoyepyrene information uh, when you, uh, you know, uh, make the steak. So that is the reason why uh, don't eat uh, the meat, burnt meat, or, you know, so uh, cooking well is very, very important. If you burn uh, the organic chemical, you can make benzoyepyrene. So that benzoyepyrene can kill you, actually. That is one of the uh, PAHs. So we want to remove such kind of PAHs. Uh, well, actually, PAHs can be uh, emitted from uh, you know, car. Actually, car actually burn the fuel, actually. So uh, we want to remove PAHs using any kind of chemicals. But the problem uh, is, benzoic pie case, if you want to burn it well, burn it, uh, that chemical compound with uh, great speed, can be. As he said, if we just, uh, you know, temperature, uh, decreasing the temperature, you cannot get the uh, degradation of benzene tire because that is an endothermal reaction. Right. What I mean, as I already talked, this is very simple and easy theory. But the important thing is all of this discussion with he and me. This discussion actually published in 1990s in science. Simplify. The degradation of benzoyepyrene fully influenced by the temperature. If so how do we relate the temperature and reaction rate? Reaction. What is the very basic chemical equation which relates the reaction and temperature? Anybody know the equation or relation or the scientist name who developed that equation? Temperature and reaction. Are in use? Yeah. <laughs> so 
So uh, can you remember the erroneous uh, theory? Can you uh, explain uh, that uh, to your dear friends? I can but Arrhenius tell us 10 degree of temperature yeah. above the speed of reaction will be double. Well, radius can, uh, well, can could be, you know, but there's a double increase or double, you know, thickness. Yeah, well, anyway, that is very, very important. Uh, so, you know, uh, one scientist from uh, England, actually, he used a radius situation uh, to verify his uh, his hypothesis, uh, the degradation uh, reaction rate of uh, benzoic pyrene using hydroxyl radical, actually, you know, uh, which is very simple, you know, uh, verification, but uh, it was very, very important because it can cause, it can enlighten, you know, the, you know, very basic information how <coughs> we can have cancer and how we can actually, you know, uh, prevent the, uh, uh, you know, cancer, actually. So uh, it was published in 1990. Well, anyway, 24.4 uh, liter per mole, uh, 25 Celsius is very, very important. Uh, well, you can uh, find the importance you know, later. And then, what is the density of the Earth's atmosphere, uh, 0 Celsius and 1 uh, atm pressure? Well, you know, uh, density, density is mass per volume, right? So simply, we know uh, the mass here and uh, uh, we know the volume uh, 0 Celsius and 1 atm and uh, 29 divided by 22.4. Well, actually, you can get 1.3 per uh, liter. Well, you multiply 10 to 6 uh, uh, each side and you can get uh, 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter. Alright. And then, uh, what is the mass of the whole Earth's atmosphere? Well, this is also interesting, right? Uh, well, if you just read uh, all of these steps, this is also a silly, you know, answer, uh, which uh, maybe middle school a student can easily you know, understand. But if you just uh, put the uh, away all of these steps, and then if I give you this question uh, to your Method exam, well, I, I, I bet uh, maybe half of you cannot solve this one. So, how can you get this? Well, you know the pressure, right? Pressure. The pressure, which is mass per unit area. So, what is the pressure? If you can just uh, put the, uh, the barometer with mercury here, and you can see uh, 30 inch, which is uh, 76 centimeter. Mercury and the density of mercury is uh, 13, around 13. And if you just multiply the height and the density, you can get the, uh, the pressure actually. And then you have now pressure if you just multiply the surface area of the earth. Well, actually, you can get uh, the mass here, right? So the surface area, and then um, you know, this is the, uh, the pressure. So you can get uh, uh, 5.3 times 10 to 18 kilograms. It's to total mass of the uh, Earth. Well, uh, you know, uh, this is just like the approximation. You cannot say uh, this is the right, you know, uh, the exact uh, mass of the atmosphere. Well, as a way of estimation is very, very important. You can say maybe uh, after uh, getting your PhD degree, and then you participate in American Chemical Society meeting, or American or you know uh, European you know, Geophysical Union meeting, and uh, somebody, well, you you actually can give a nice presentation using this simple estimation. Maybe some of the other you know, scientists raise their hand and ask you, is it right thing? Is your estimation is good enough? So uh, what 
your what what should your question be? What should it be? I just uh, give you the right answer. As I always talk to you guys, this is better than nothing. Have you ever thought about the estimation? Well, actually, nobody can, you know, do this. You know. Nobody, never ever done this before. So, the estimation is kind of the first step. And then, the exact, you know, calculation later. Estimation is very, very important. Just uh, uh, put the, uh, all the homework uh, assignments there, and also put the small uh, homework assignment. Well, as I already talked, you can have two weeks. So, uh, well, start uh, the first homework set uh, today, and submit it uh, in two weeks, right? Well, you can submit it, you know, uh, tomorrow. You can submit submit it in uh, two weeks, but. And also, you can submit it uh, you know, two weeks later, but you, as I already told, you cannot get the uh, full grade, although you fully solve uh, your you know, problem well. Right? I also put all of these uh, small homework things uh, at the uh, home page, so please check it. Alright, <coughs> this question is a little bit more environmental related, right? The exhaust gas uh, from an automobile contain 1.5% <coughs> of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, or what is the concentration of carbon monoxide in the gas uh, in units of uh, gram per kilometer, uh, 25 Celsius in European uh, pressure? Looks more like environmental problem, right? And uh, I uh, kindly uh, you know, provide the, uh, the answer here. You can check it, actually. Well, as I already talked, uh, I will check uh, the assumptions uh, you are using. That is very, very important. And then I will check the uh, answer. Well, anyway. Stoichiometry. Uh, well, most of the reactions uh, and chemical reactions mostly, or biochemical reactions mostly, uh, follows and occur <coughs> uh, on the basis of integer moral basis. This is just like the uh, kind of you know, uh, theoretically right, but uh, I'm very I really have very strong interest in the uh, uh, to find out natural phenomena, and um, you know, uh, and uh, the implications of uh, that natural phenomena. 
when we when you start uh, finding uh, with uh, such kind of natural phenomena things, you never ever actually get the uh, this nice stoichiometry with integer. Yeah. That's right. That's right. As you know. <laughs> because uh, this kind of stoichiometry is in the theoretical chemistry. The nature we are doing right now, actually, this is the integer. This is interesting. Right? Everyday life. You are eating, you are studying, you are behaving. You know. All of such kind of behaviors can be described as actually this kind of numerical equations. That is what scientists usually do. Right? But as I went on, you may ask me, so so what? What do you want to talk to me? My purpose is let's start with you know, simple hypothesis estimation. That is very important. And this kind of astrophysiometry can give you very initial solution for your estimation. All right. Everybody knows here what is our one more of carbon, a 12 gram uh, respite, a one more of oxygen to give one more of carbon dioxide, 44 gram. This is very nice uh, implication. And also, but uh, as I already talked, most of the environmental problems you are dealing with in graduate level, uh, well, you cannot easily find this simple type of uh, stoichiometric. Um, and also, I just want you to uh, memorize at least the molecular number and weight. Uh, at least 1 to 20. 1. What is 1? Hydrogen, right? What is 20? Calcium. So please uh, remember that. And the useful molecular weight of uh, hydrogen, from carbon 12, uh, oxygen 16, sulfur 32. Well, actually, these are not in, the, in uh, number 20. Yeah, sulfur is, but I mean, uh, chlorine is, is you know, out of bound. But chlorine is very, very important. I just give you one uh, interesting uh, current uh, information. Current belongs to what group? Seven. Seven A. Seven B. <laughs> How do you call it? What is the name of this group? Yeah, thousand. Right. Thousand. Thousand is very very rare. So, you guys may know how Nazi police kill the uh, Jews. How do they kill them? What type of gas? There are so many you know, different gases. This one, chlorine gas. So, uh, <coughs> it's just like the uh, oxygens. If you just uh, uh, what else uh, can you have? Uh, what uh, else compounds in halogen group? Bromine, fluorine, right? Um, well, have you know, have you seen the uh, hydrofluoric acid? They are very strong acid, right? Uh, hydrochloric, hydro uh, nitrate, but hydrofluoric acid, if you just uh, Put the, you know, you can see the, uh, the, uh, the gas actually you know, emitted. So uh, we can say chlorine, uh, chlorine, those are very rapid. It is just like fire, fire, right? So we can say chlorine is just like the liquefied or gasified, you know, fire. So what Nazi did is, they are very smart actually. They can uh, know how to kill the people effectively. So they just uh, put the, uh, the juice uh, in the uh, 
the shower, you know, you know maybe uh, this size of room, and they pack it uh, maybe 300 uh, you know, juice. And on the top, uh, they have their shower, you know, facilities. At first time, they just, uh, you know, turn on shower and sprink, uh, sprinkle water uh, with warm water, I, I, I think. Uh, so maybe the Jews very happy at that time. Wow, we can, now we can have a bath, shower. Then what they did is they just uh, turn on, turn uh, off the water and then just uh, introduce chlorine gas. Chlorine is, as I already taught, you know, gas, gas by, you know, fire. So they breathe, right? And uh, the moisture actually well, you know, distributed their uh, root system. And they breathe uh, the chlorine gas actually, you know, and the chlorine can easily also on their lung cell. What happened is, chlorine is as a way of fire. So it start to burn the burn their lung. I really don't know how, you know. But uh, this chemical actually really works. So they can easily kill the people with postants. Well, anyway, Korean is very, very, yeah. and also, so uh, this is the reason why you guys uh, need to know uh, the number of Korean and the uh, mass of atomic weight of Korean, because Korean is one of the most, you know, significantly used chemical compounds. Think about that. If you just, uh, if you just uh, check the, uh, uh, maybe the rest part of the, uh, this text, it just introduces you very significant pesticides. And uh, uh, the worst with science means uh, it is killing something. And all the contaminants. But most of the contaminants here, maybe 70 or 80 percent, include chlorine. So what uh, people want is, if you want to kill somebody, or if you want to kill some vermins, or some bugs, people usually you know, use Korean, <coughs> actually. Korean itself is very unstable, so you just uh, combine it to very simple organic chemical. And then sprinkle it. Well, as I already talked, DDT, I just gave some you know, uh, examples. Well, your grandfather uh, in the uh, 1960s, 50s, well, at that time, we are using uh, DDT to expel the rice on their head. So if you sprinkle DDT on your head, and the rice on your uh, head actually want to, uh, don't want to stay there because it is too toxic environment. DDT include three chlorines. So this is the reason why you guys want to know about the chlorine. Chlorine is very, very important. Right. I finish it. Okay, related uh, question. Uh, here, gasoline can be created <coughs> by CAH18, and, uh, which has worked a weight of 114 how much oxygen is needed to burn at this fuel. This is very, very important. Uh, well, uh, the question is very simple, and the solution could be very simple. The problem you need to, uh, to solve this problem well is, you really need to set up uh, this you know, chemical equation. Well, I know you can balance this equation, right? You can get it from the uh, elementary or freshman chemistry or high school chemistry class. I'm not uh, going to give you much further information here. Well, anyway, uh, here we have nice uh, uh, equation. Then, using stoichiometry, uh, we can calculate uh, the mass of the uh, oxygen and mass of pure, and we can get the ratio. All right. Well, uh, we have just finished uh, essential tools for the uh, uh, 
for solving environmental problem. Uh, we will uh, deal with uh, much more on uh, toolkits called the mass balance. Mass balance is very, very important. Nowadays, um, mass balance is like not in the uh, diet. Well, I really have a strong interest in the bad program. Uh, you know, mass cannot actually explain uh, your diet program. Uh, what kind of uh, factor we need to add on the mass balance to have nice body? Well, this is just like that. Here is one more rice, the same volume. Here is one more of chicken fat. What do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? Why you pay uh, if the uh, one more chicken fat? So, you want to add calories on mass balance, right? How do you uh, explain calories? Other words. Yes, so we can say energy balance, right? But in the environmental problem, uh, which is not that difficult compared to the uh, real human being problem, so uh, that you know, problem is very, very important. Uh, to solve the uh, diet problem, we actually want to do it uh, energy balance, but here, environmental problem solving, we are not going to do energy works. We will do the mass balance uh, from the next press. Any questions? Any comments? No? Wow. Thank you for making a complete lecture. Thank you.